Hey, hey, Blue Table fans, Spencer here with your second Shaltari Tips and Tactics video. This time we're discussing Shaltari War Striders. So currently there are four types of War Striders available to Shaltari forces. You have the Jaguar, which is sort of the main workhorse. The Ocelot, which is just heavy firepower. The uh, Dream Snare, which is a, a, more of a support strider than it is an offensive weapon and the Coyote, which is your Command Strider. So I thought I'd do a quick video and show you how these work and a couple of different uh, strategies you can use with each one. All right, so let's start off talking about the main workhorse War Strider for the Shaltari. This is the Jaguar. Uh, these things are insanely cool, uh, not just models, but in the game as well. They are just brutal. Uh, they have pretty high armor. Uh, sitting at an armor of nine. Uh, their main disadvantage is that they're slow. Uh, they can only move four inches. However, all their weapons are move and fire four. Now, speaking of weapons, uh, these guys have two Gauss cannons, one on either side of the body. Uh, so they have uh, arcs of front and side for each one. And then on the top, they have a turret-mounted uh, twin ion cannon which gives them any aircraft capabilities. So these things are super versatile. Uh, they do cost 100 points each, but they have four damage points, which makes them pretty survivable, especially with a uh, five up passive save. The main advantage to these guys is that as walkers, as striders, they ignore low lying terrain. So on a city board like this, you're not gonna run into it as much, but uh, if there were, say, rubble or broken cars or barricades or whatever, they can just walk right over it. They don't care. So, yeah, Jaguars are very versatile, but they don't specialize in any one thing. They're kind of a jack-of-all-trades war strider. And they basically combine uh, a Tomahawk and a Kukri tank into one vehicle, but they lose out on massive numbers that you can get with those and they also lose out on being skimmers like those tanks but again being a walker they have their advantages uh, you can run jaguars in squads of three models so a 300 point squad uh, but they they will wreck pretty much anything that comes comes close to them so with their two goss cannons they effectively have a 28 inch threat range because they've move and fire four which means they can move four inches and still shoot with them and the Gauss cannons themselves have a 24 inch range when countered, uh, when going against countermeasures, so pretty much any vehicle. Uh, but if you want to use them to shoot at buildings, they have an infinite range, so that's cool. Uh, the main disadvantage is they're only one shot each, but they are energy 10 and accuracy of two plus. So they're going to hit more often than not, uh, and they're more often than not going to kill or damage whatever they hit because they do hit really hard. Um, so running them in squads of three, you can get, you know, six energy 10 shots out a turn with one squad, uh, and still be able to, uh, shoot down aircraft as well. So one of the other big tactics for these guys is using them as anti-air support because the twin ion cannon, uh, throws out four shots, uh, with a three plus accuracy, 18 inch countered range, still move and fire four. But they can also shoot in reaction. Uh, because it's a separate weapon from these, you can still shoot with your Gauss cannons during your activation and then shoot with your AA weapon in reaction to enemy craft. So with three of these guys, you're getting 12 shots uh, of anti-aircraft plus the six shots of anti-tank weapons. So these things are, like I said, they're very versatile and they're very roundabout. Uh, but again, they don't specialize in any one thing and enemy heavy tanks uh, like UCM Gladius tanks are going to pose quite a threat to them because like everything in Shaltari, they're a little bit fragile. All right, so the next most common walker you're gonna see is this. This is the Coyote Command Strider. Uh, and you're gonna see it because it's the only command vehicle that Shaltari has so far. Uh, much like the Jaguar, it's armor nine, four inch movement, four damage points. Uh, this has a 4-up passive save instead of a 5, uh, but it gets rid of the AA weapon in favor of the command module. So it still has the two Gauss cannons, uh, and it's 105 points. Uh, you can't take these in squads, obviously. 
Uh, the cool thing is, if this is destroyed, the command module uh, can eject. Uh, it's 2 plus uh, on a D6, and you're going to it, put it anywhere uh, within 46 inches of the destroyed unit. So it could potentially go really far, it could potentially not go very far. Um, but it's cool because it does give it a little survivability, and what it lets it do is it lets you keep drawing cards. Uh, as opposed to if you, you know, uh, UCM uh, Kodiak gets blown up, you don't get to draw cards anymore because your commander's dead. So there isn't a lot to say about the Coyote because it doesn't have the versatility of Jaguar, uh, but it does have its own little perks and that it has the higher save and it's got the command module. So uh, expect to see a lot of these. If you're playing to play Shaltar, you need to pick one of these up because it's the only command unit that we have. But it's a very cool model, and ours doesn't like to stand up because the legs are at a wonky angle. Um, we do recommend uh, magnetizing the command module so it can pop out. Uh, if you get it done through us, we can do that for you. It snaps right in there. So yeah, that's the Coyote Command Walker. Next up we have the Ocelot War Strider, and this is probably one of my favorite units in the Shaltari army, if not one of my favorite models. Uh, because I love the War Striders, I love the tripod design, uh, very War of the Worlds. Uh, but this thing just has a giant gun. It's the only weapon it has. It doesn't have Gauss cannons on the side or anything like that. It just has a particle cannon. Uh, so the Ocelot, uh, like the other two, is Armor 9, Movement 4, 5-up counter save. It has 4 damage points. These are only 95 points apiece. Uh, they take a heavy slot, much like the Jaguar. Uh, but their big role is they are specialists. This is your heavy hitter, anti-everything uh, War Strider. So the Particle Cannon is energy 13, which is the highest energy value in the game uh, so far. It's only one shot, 2 plus accuracy. Its biggest advantage, though, is that it has infinite range even when countered. So on a board like this, where you can kind of just see all the way down to the end, uh, if you park something like this here, everything down, down this road is fair play um, and will <laughs> pretty much get wrecked. Its major disadvantage, though, is that it's only one shot. Um, and you can take two of these in a squad. Uh, so you can get two shots, but you know they aren't designed for laying down massive amounts of firepower. They're designed for pinpoint very hard hitting firepower. So the particle cannon has demolisher special rules so when it shoots buildings it uh, it's a d3 plus 2 for damage or amount of damage points that you do to the building so these are really good for clearing out small buildings uh, if you have two of them you can take down heavy buildings but it still takes a long time just from the way buildings are in the game. Uh, it also has the awesome power special rule where it ignores all countermeasures including passive ones so your buddy playing PHR with his little command, you know, walkers with their their passive save, uh, this does not care. It will annihilate them. Uh, so obviously the main strategy for these guys is hard hitting, precise pinpoint firing. Uh, you have to deploy these very tactically because, like all war strikers, they're not very fast, but they hit hard. They hit like. 15 freight trains, but again, they're also frail. They don't have super high armor. Although armor 9 is respectable, uh, it's not not the highest in the world. So yeah, these are very specialist units, very specialized War Strider, but they're super cool, and I highly, highly recommend picking one up if you play Shaltari. Uh, and much like the Coyote, you know, you can get the gun magnetized, so it'll sit in there. Trying to do this one-handed is not the easiest task in the world. But yeah, the Ocelot is awesome. Uh, parking them where you want them can shut down entire lanes of the table because your opponent's not going to want to fight with them. Uh, but you can also use them if your opponent is claiming an objective in a small building. You can just absolutely wreck face uh, and destroy that building and kill the infantry inside. So they provide you with a lot of options, but Again, not quite as versatile as something like, say, a Jaguar. All right, and the last War Strider in the Shaltari arsenal is the Dream Snare. This is a support strider. It is not heavily armed for offensive capabilities like the others, 
Uh, it does have similar stats, armor 9, movement 4, uh, 5 up passive save, 4 damage points. Uh, the main difference is this has got is only 65 points, and it's a support choice instead of a heavy choice like the Jaguar and Ocelot. Uh, Weapons-wise, all it has is these uh, microwave guns on the sides, uh, arranged in a format known as the Dragon Cannon, which is <laughs> a really hardcore name, and I love it. So the Dragon Cannon uh, it has one on each side, as you can tell. Uh, so it does have front and side covers. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of turret weapon because its turret is replaced with this thing, which I'll tell you what that does in a sec. Uh, but the Dragon Cannon is kind of a neat weapon. Uh, it's an anti-infantry weapon, essentially. So it's energy four, so it's not going to do anything to any tanks. But each of these is 12 shots. <laughs> so any infantry caught out in the open is pretty boned if one of these comes walking up. Uh, accuracy 2, 18 inch range, still only move and fire 4 like everything else. Um, but it does have the through cover uh, special rule for weapons, so it ignores cover when it's shooting, which is really cool. Uh, however, uh, if worse comes to worse and you find yourself against an enemy tank with one of these guys, you can do a concentrated beam where you fire all four of them at once in one big energy 12 shot. The downside is it's only range 9, uh, and you're still only moving fire 4. So, you can only move 4 inches and then shoot, uh, and it's only a 9 inch range. And frankly, if an enemy tanks that close to you, something might have already gone horribly, horribly wrong. So what is this big curved thing on its back, as opposed to having a turret or a command module? That is the shield boosting relay, and this is where the Dream Snare is awesome. Uh, the Dream Snare increases the passive save of nearby friendly models. So all Shaltari units within six inches of a Dream Snare, including the Dream Snare itself, gain a minus one modifier to their passive countermeasure save if they have one. If they don't, such as infantry, they don't get one. Uh, it's not cumulative, so you can't stack multiple Dream Snares and try and be cheesy, uh, but it is really, really cool because it makes your stuff more survivable. So, for example, so you have two separate battle groups here because the Dream Snare can't be taken uh, with a coyote because the coyote's command and it can't take support. Um, but basically, as long as this guy is within six inches of this guy, his four up save now becomes a three up save. This guy essentially gets a Space Marine save now against everything, which is incredible. It makes him infinitely more survivable uh, and the dream snare itself is now a four up save because it's affected as well so one particularly effective setup i find is doing a war fist which is the heavy uh support choice slot in sheltar armies uh, you can do with three jaguars in this example i have two ocelots these guys are great with one of these because their save is now a four up as long as they stay within six inches of him and since they're in the same battle group, they all activate at the same time. Uh, so this guy is going to provide pretty much no covering fire, but you keep him behind buildings and out of the way where stuff won't shoot him. Uh, maybe keep a couple of AA units back with them just to play it safe in case enemy uh, fast movers come in. But now these guys have a better save, which may, is going to make them harder to kill. And they've got this entire firing lane to just murder anything that dares walk in their way. So this is a great setup. It's not the cheapest setup because you've got two guys that are 95 points and then one that's 65 points, but it can be insanely brutal uh, because your big heavy hitters that you're gonna use to take out high armor tanks, you're gonna use to take out buildings are going to be even harder to kill than they already were because they're now getting a four up save as opposed to five up. So this is, a great setup. It's also the same thing doing it with uh, three Jaguars because the Jaguars provide their own anti-air support for the Dream Snare because the Dream Snare is going to be a target. Uh, even though it is getting a four up save, people are going to try and kill it because it gives everything else uh, a better save. Uh, and this isn't just exclusive to Warshires. Like I said, it's all Shatari units with a uh, passive save. 
So even your flyers, even your gates benefit from this guy, uh, which is awesome. The Dream Snare is just an insanely great unit. And like everything else in the range, it's an awesome looking model. And personally, if you're starting a Shantari army, I suggest picking up at least one to toss in with your heavy, uh, your heavy slot with your War Fist battle group. Uh, because if you're running stuff like Ocelots or Jaguars, having a Dream Snare nearby at all times really, really bumps up their survivability because Shaltari are a little frail and having a 4-up save is no no joking matter. You know, it's not something to scoff at. It's insanely good. And like I said, with this sort of configuration, you now have dominance of this portion of the table because nothing is gonna try and come out here except aircraft, uh, which is why, again, I suggest having some anti-air uh, either back here or up here. Now, how do you get anti-aircraft up here? I will tell you that in the next video. So those are the Shaltari War Striders. Uh, I wanna thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If there's anything I missed or something I got wrong, I was trying very carefully to double check every rule before I recorded. Uh, please let me know uh, so I can uh, amend any mistakes I may have made. And be sure to stay tuned here to the Blue Table YouTube channel because in our next video we'll be talking about something new to the Shaltari, Battle Striders. See you guys next time.